welcome to those of you who are joining me here in the group. We're live streaming from human design dot live we also have the human design system dot com and today this is a program that's going to take you deeper into the fundamentals of understanding your human design body graph as well as how do you get across the fundamentals the most essential qualities of what the other person needs to know or must grasp when it comes to learning how to live their human design. Now, in reality, all of us are living our human designs all the time. But at what frequency are you expressing the foundational nature and truths inherent within your design, or the fundamental uh, areas where you are sensitive to amplifying the challenges, the struggles, the frustrations, the pain, the anxiety. If you're living from the shadow state of the design, life can feel very uncomfortable. And it is the important work of a guide to help a newcomer navigate that human design system body graph in order to unlock that human being's potential. So if that's something that excites you, learning about the human design system is something that just fascinates you, and you've taken living your design, rave ABCs, rave cartography, you are in the right place. Now, I know some of you here in this group with me right now haven't yet taken rave cartography. We have that coming up with Peter Burv. He's a 3-5 and he's a manifesting generator, been in human design over a decade like myself. And he is also teaching the rave cartography here with us. So if you're interested in that, a couple of weeks from now, we'll be doing a live open house event, just like this one. So now let's dive deep. And one of the things I'm gonna ask you to maybe jot down or contemplate if you're emotional and remember, go back to the beginning of your personal experience with human design. Do you remember when human design found you, when it came across it, when it began for you, that you unlocked through your strategy and honoring your authority, that you began to unlock the true authentic nature of who you were? Because when you can remember back to that time when human design made a strong, powerful difference in your life, and you can convey that empowerment to another, by understanding and not only sympathizing, but comprehending and having compassion for the dilemma that is there in not only your own chart, but especially with the charts of the people that you're working with. When you can grasp the fundamental essence of the pain points and help to unravel those knots of karma and challenge and suffering with your client, those are the places, those sensitive areas of pain and suffering that you can really stand out from the competition with regards to not you having competition with others, with regards to others in human design, but with regards to the competitiveness of what is bombarding your client, the conditioned world, from all sides, all around them. Okay, your competition for that person's attention is everything else the not self identifies with, with regards to what's important in their life. Okay. So when you can immediately hit upon that pain point, I can say for me, the pain point for me was that feeling of inherent lack or of value, of worthiness, of ability to achieve or prove. And so what does the not self do? It tries to negate that pain by doing everything in its power to prove how good it is, how it is or is not about this or that. So the strategies inside the mind are the things that are holding and locking you and your client into the pain points, into the suffering. So if you can remember that beginning when you started to experience the success, the satisfaction, the peace, the surprise of living in alignment and what that the fruits of that brought to the table, to your experience, that's the thing that's going to make a difference, a shift in not only your life, but can continue to unravel and then unlock your potential. But also when you convey the importance of identifying with those sensitive pain points and realizing 
that no longer do you have to be bound by the shackles of those pain points, that suffering, that mind distortion that makes you think that you have to, must, should do those things that the mind convinces you, cajoles you. And it's the mind is simply a collection of thoughts and feelings and experiences and expressions that have been gathered throughout the life. It's just conditioning. It's always plagued by conditioning. So we can let go of that conditioning if we can identify it. And that is the job of a living your design guide. That is your task. Should you choose to accept, you know, picking up the the baton and carrying on this flame that Ra ignited for all of us who use human design in alignment with our work. So Ra Uruhu, we are celebrating 35 years of the voice having brought the system through its mouthpiece, through Ra into the world. And Ra was an amazing 5-1 manifester. His way is not your way, is not my way. But he did lay out a foundation of the way for us to use this system with regards to helping humanity foster a better reality for all of us through alignment with truth. And that alignment with truth has to begin with you. So moving forward in this, it's important for you to recognize, are you correct in taking this next step? Whether you are going to use this system for yourself and your family and friends, for your business, for your career, for your advising or coaching practice, for your psychological, what have you. Moving forward in this means that you've accepted the truth and the surrender of, to the truth that the body is this one precious life that we live and that the mind is an observer, a witness to that life, not in control. The sooner you can let go with the identification with I inside the head about the self, the sooner you can begin to live the fullest expression of this human being in this human form. So again, hi, I'm Lavina. I'm a certified living your Des design guide teacher trainer. You can see in December of 2018, I began teaching human design guides and helping you to awaken not only to your truth, but help also to ignite that flame within each individual that you come into contact with. And it's one of the most powerful gifts one of the most precious things you can do, one of the most important professionals that we have is living your design as a guide. That is the truth. Now, I'm also um, a person who has studied BG5, which is the career in business track of the human design system. And that's one of the things that I'm going to bring into this is to help you become aware of the levels to which you are here to be successful in a partnership with the environment. So that's one of the things as well, as well as the profit potentials that are there within your own design. And I offer this as a gift to my students without any kind of um, asking for anything back. It's part of the business of using human design to open the door to the true self. Because remember, the moment you stop being in control of your life, your life is perfectly financed. And oftentimes you come to human design, you know, going, wow, this is amazing. You're so interested in it. You're so passionate about it. You see the difference it makes in your life. And you also want to use this tool out in the world. One of the things BG5 can help us with is helping us to recognize consciously and leverage those strengths, talents, and gifts that you have in your design in order to recognize how you are here to be recognized by others if you're a projector or to respond in satisfaction to having life use you in the correct aligned way that you are designed to be used if you are a generator because that energy is there to be used up satisfyingly so that you can be who you are for yourself in this life, to generate life. You are the life force on this planet. Or if you're a manifester, to initiate, to inform in order to impact. Your life will be perfectly financed when you align to the signature of your design. Maybe it's the sweetness of success as it is for me. Or maybe it's the surprise in life if you are a reflector. But remember 
You must enter into using human design correctly as the um, energy inside of you is drawn towards using it. And then your life is perfectly financed. Not going to say that it's a cakewalk, but it's going to feel sweet. Even those challenges will be sweet if you're a projector. Even those frustrations that maybe come arise like a flash in the pan, you'll be able to mitigate that frustration with alignment with your truth and come back home to the satisfaction of opening the door to not only your true self, because you must do this for you first, generator, but also to help hand that key over to the other so that they too can unlock the door to their true self. We are guides. We facilitate. We don't do this for others. They must come into it correctly as well and do it for themselves, for themselves, because this is about the fulfillment of purpose. Now, in Ra's words, human design isn't for everyone. It'll never be for everyone. It's for those that are ready. That readiness is a serendipity. It's a door opening slightly. It's that moment of possibility, the possibility of being able truly to go a different way. It's time to go a different way. It's time to go the way of ourselves, what we are as beings, nine centers, centered beings. And that, my friends, is what you're here to do. Help open that door slightly and allow that person to walk in in the fullness of the fulfillment of their highest truth and purpose. In order to open that door, that door must be blown wide open within you. And that is one of the aims of this course, is to help open that door completely, utterly, fully. Everything that you learned in the foundations of human design, we are now going to put that into practice with regards to how do we apply this knowledge, not only to you, but also with our clients? How do we implement the intricacies, our awareness of that body graph, translate that body graph into plain English speak so that it is, um, I don't want to say dumbed down but simplified so that even the most challenged with regards to the fog of the not self purpose, even the most challenged of us can hear that call of their own being drawing them towards truth. Not that we have power over anyone, but that we are helping to draw them, call them towards raw wanted each of you guides of us guides to be individuals that now brought in good conditioning that is absolutely required in order for people to realign to their truth because they've been pulled away from their truth for decades for the most part. Okay. So in becoming a guide, one of the first and most important things you will need to do as well as you will need to facilitate or foster within your own um, fractal, the clients and the customers, the consumers, the students, the friends, you will need to help them learn how to surrender to the form. So can you remember the first time you witnessed your mind's lies and could let them go? That distinct, clear memory of the first shattering of what happened when you recognized the, the hold that your mind had on your activities, your beliefs, your thoughts, what you'd realized was true about yourself, everything just cracked and shattered. I could remember that time. Remember, I said it was about my heart center. And I can remember standing in a store with my now husband. Back then, we were just boyfriend, girlfriend in the new fresh you know, throws just uh, maybe eight months in. So the honeymoon had started to wear off a little bit. And I could remember he was upset. I assumed that my uh, action or whatever I said or did caused the upsetness. And I remember my mouth opening up and out came the words, I can't do anything right. My eyes widened, my hand flew up and co covered my face, my mouth. And I was shocked because I could recognize, having gone through living your design, that this was a not self strategy or a tendency. 
that this was a false and negative belief that I had about myself, where I delivered the ultimatum. I can't do anything right, says the poor three, personality three. Yeah, even in my heart center, there's a third line there. We know the third line is about making mistakes. And the most downtrodden human beings you will find on this planet are the unconditioned or undeconditioned. There we go. The deeply conditioned third lines, always negating, berating, thinking that there's something wrong with them. We have to let go of the mind's lie. Let it go and surrender to the form and its truth. One of the deepest recognitions, another one, a deeper shattering that I had down the road was remembering, you know, the story. Every time the emotional system goes into its pain and suffering with regards to its uh, emotional state being on the dysregulated and dis uncomfortable side, and the mind starts to kick it up a notch and come up with reasons and stories as to why you are sad or not feeling well coming up with everything's my fault. It's all their fault. Fault, blame, shame, guilt. Yeah. All of these negativities that the mind cooks up. Those are all lies. They're never authentic, real, and true. When you think about yourself inside of your head about yourself, it's always layered on with the deepest of conditionings and the deepest sufferings and pain points. It's not the truth. So in order to let, help your clients let go of that mind story, you must first have walked through that door yourself. So this is what some of this work that we're going to do in the next um, couple of months is help you recognize that mind's lie and let go of its inherent falsities. And it is the thing that will repeat louder and louder and louder louder than the quiet, still, soft voice of the aware splenic center. Louder than the response of the body, the mind will kick it up and will repeat and repeat and repeat. That is the clue to let go of the repeating mind that makes you shrink and feel negative, negated and disempowered. That is not our truth. So a living your design guide teacher is a guide to awakenness. Living design is a great trip. Your responsibility in that is that you're here to help people wake up. This is not about training others as professionals. This is the only spiritual course you'll find in human design. So when you work one on one with a client, unless that client is aiming for moving on and becoming a certified guide or an analyst themselves, it's not about teaching them the mechanics of the structure of the human design body graph. It is about helping solve their dilemmas by helping them recognize the truths inherent within that core aspect of what they are for themselves or for the world. So waking people up is not about adding on more piles of shame and guilt and blame and regret. It is about fostering and serving with compassion and holding that light, broadcasting that light of someone who is aligned to truth. Not that we give our truth to them that they have to follow our truth, no, but that we take that, that little burning flame inside of us that has been ignited by design and we help light that candle that they already have maybe just slow burning embers because it's all lit when we were born, but it becomes darker and darker and darker. The more the shadow self rears its ugly head and attempts to take over the life because of the conditioning, help light that fire inside that other. We all have it. We all have that fire, that burning, that longing, that yearning for truth for living our own truth, for not taking on someone else's truth. This is why Ra always taught human design from this place of experiment. Try it and see. This is not about taking on the responsibility for someone else to wake up, but giving them all the tools, all the techniques, which that is what human design is. It's simply a technique, a technique for helping someone discover the truth that is inherent within them. 
This is why we have strategy and authority. This is why we have the human design system as form knowledge. Ross said that this was, he was a messenger of the form, that the human design system was here for the world to have its own authority. And it begins with you and anyone else you come into contact with to stand as a shining example of someone who walks their truth, whatever their truth is, whatever your truth is, this form knowledge, this one precious life that you have to offer to live in an example of someone who is empowered and shares or supports in alignment with their own truth. So that's one of the things that I really want to get across is that we need to make mind our servant, not the master. Now, mind isn't for turning off, Ross says. It's for aligning. It's for correcting it. We have great minds. They're beautiful things. But the mind is not there to be your enemy for life. It isn't. It's here to serve. It's here to express you. It is here for the communion of one unique, differentiated perspective to an other. So standing in the truth of your sovereignty, that you are the authority of what it's like for you and helping to translate what you see in the materials in this being and helping to guide them home to their own truth. That's why we have strategy and authority. Now, when you're shifting from being a student, which is what you're doing, should you step through that doorway into the world of becoming a human design professional? It means that you begin to learn from your students by walking the path with them. The work of a living your design guide never ends because it's not about, you know, only showing up and spouting the the words that are on the slides. It's about living, breathing, and being this. This is a lifestyle because if you are not aligned within, you are not going to be effective without or outside of this little bubble that you inhabit this form that you are witnessing and watching. So the third thing I want to invite you to do or ask you to do is to dedicate yourself through the human design system, learning through this experience by observing, questioning, listening, offering compassion, cultivating awareness for yourself first above all else. Human design is the school of enlightened selfishness with regards to how Ra originally labeled it. And of course, we, particularly for those of you generative people, we must get into this experience for ourselves first, for ourselves first, because no one can carry on that flame for yourself other than you. Now, I have found it true that my students are definitely inspirational when it comes to witnessing and watching their awakening, their flowering, their recognition of the true highest potential, their calling, if you will, their own truths that can definitely inspire you to continue on in the journey, which can be a struggle to obey the body and not pay attention to what the mind says. You can take it into account. Very nice mind. Thank you so much for telling me that, for sharing your opinion. But then put it back to work in what it's there for, looking out into the world, measuring and comparing and judging out there, not internally. Cultivating awareness helps you to recognize when your own mind is triggering you and creating that negation of the authenticity authenticity within you. So dedicating yourself to the human design experiment means this experience will have its ups and downs. Yeah, especially for us third lines, we'll have mistakes. Don't worry. One of the biggest things people worry at this point is, am I ready? Can I do this? Yeah, the mind will go, who am I to be this? Who am I to do that? How can I help anyone else? When I'm still in the beginnings of this, you know, in order to help others, it becomes an alignment with our fractal, 
those who are ready to learn from you will show up in your life. They'll ask, they'll invite, they'll present themselves. When the teacher is ready, the student appears. It's not just the other way around. So to allow yourself to go gently, kindly into this experience, to dedicate yourself to your own personal process first is very important because they learn via your auric example, your energetic example. And as Ross says, learning human design isn't the same as living it. It is a requirement that you must be your own authority in order for this to work, for you to call, to put out the call, or to live as an example, or to influence others, or to expound upon the details and be an authority or an expert on this. It must be true that you are your own authority for you, on you. Learning, living, breathing, being this system takes a lot of courage. And if there's a fire inside of you, if you find yourself just always wanting to hear more about what this is, or what that means, or, you know, learning and discussing and expressing the wisdom potential that is there, then you're in the right place because it's a journey. It's not a destination. You don't have to have it perfect in order to help the others that are there. You just have to be a little bit further up the mountain as they say, in order to reach back and offer up a helping hand. However, in this course, it is very important that you comprehend the centers, the centers being the hubs of energy, the life force that is there or that is inconsistent within the individual that is presenting to you. So it's important that you have all of these foundations very clear within your recognition of the patterns of this system, that you use the correct terminology. And it's not just about the simplicity. Are you preoccupied with finding answers to questions that don't matter? It's also the nuances and the specificity to you, generator, trying to answer everyone else's questions, running down these rabbit holes of things that don't matter to you is where you get pulled off track. So in this course, I'm going to uh, give you lectures as well as describe for you more specificity with regards to how do we deal with the different energies that you're going to be presented with. For example, the manifester and his or her recognitions are different. Their challenges are different than those who are projected versus those who are generative versus those who are reflective. So all of these centers, how do we foster the intelligence of the awareness of the individual in front of us? How do we give them that helping hand and partner with them to come to the realizations of truth, to witness and watch as they flower under our care? It is important that we have the language, a grasp of the fundamentals and the language aligned to their design. So not just the centers, but also the frequencies of those centers, the circuitry that is there, because the body graph is multidimensional, just as you are. You are a multidimensional being. You have all these nuances and subtleties, all these energies that you are working with. You are not just that natal imprinting. So to understand and to comprehend the recognition of the truth of you, all you have to do is touch in with the intelligence of the form. The intelligence of the form is where your nature of being resides. Now, the human design system is a reading of your genetic code. With a human design education, your genetic code can be read in detail. Now, that's the work of a professional analyst, this ability to detail the mechanics. Obviously, that's profound and it has its place. It reveals the complete nature in its subtleties, the complete nature of the individual. However, by simply grasping the surface mechanic, what this work aspires to communicate, you will have a grounding in this life that is immediately going to bring a difference in your process and also in the process of the people you serve. 
So in serving the individuals that are interested in seeing, witnessing, watching what you are doing with your energy generator or how you are managing, guiding others' energy projector or how you are impacting manifester, how you are informing, how you have the freedom to initiate or for the reflector, the objective observational qualities of you touching into the greater all that isness, this brilliance and wisdom of being you. The work of a guide is staying on the surface and translating that depth simply. So instead of going into further and further detail, you must do, definitely do, study into the depths, into the detail. But when you're working with a client who is new at this, remember to keep it very simple. Come back out. When you're in doubt, zoom back out and bring it to the fundamental basis of what is true within that individual's hum in the human being life force. And that life force can be comprehended simply as the mechanical structures of type, strategy, and authority. Okay. And oftentimes you come, people come to this and they want to know more about what about this? What does this gate mean and that gate mean? So right here, right now, I want to tell you, if you try to analyze a gate and a line by itself, that is not the sum totality of the human being. Yes, we can see that there are aspects there and you're definitely going to work with, let's say they have an undefined ashna. There are fears that are there. You're definitely going to work with the fears. Fears are very important to unveil so that people are not locked into those fears and identifying with those fears as their own to make decisions from. Absolutely. But remember to keep it simple. Come back to the surface. Repeat yourself. It cannot be stressed too much with regards to type, strategy, and authority, giving us an awareness of the nature of being. Now, we're in this together. You, me, all of us here at Human Design Life, uh, dot live. So we're partners in your success. We have a team of individuals who are here connecting together to share to offer support, camaraderie, learning, growing together. This is part of the journey. One of the things I love so much about uh, social media is having a community of like-minded individuals that you can come together with to discuss our mastery of this system, our experimentation, our learning, our journey. What's it like for you? So, one of the things that really impacted me when I learned from Alakananda is how to do this living your design guide um, train trainer work is one of the things that he said something like, "How can you help another if you don't if you don't have if you don't understand the helplessness or the choicelessness?" And that is very triggering when we say choicelessness. Very triggering especially in our day and age where there's a lot of this, um, you know, I create my own reality through law of attraction and nobody wants to be um, seen as helpless or choiceless. It can seem, seem on the surface, very disempowering if you don't help the person make sense of what it means to live in a vehicle that is destined for a particular experience or has a karma with others to interface with for a particular experience. That experience is part of the learning and the nature of being human in this life, experience, witnessing, watching. We can start to grok. Grok is a term I love um, that helps us understand. Grok is like comprehending, comprehending so deeply. It's like you're eating it. You've ingested it. You've digested it. The word helplessness, choicelessness, it's a huge triggering for someone who has not studied the fundamental mechanics of human design and has not witnessed how choiceless we are to the expression of our nature, our being, particularly in interaction with others or the transits. Our life and this experience, the witnessing, the watching, the woundings, the suffering, the pain, the joys, the sorrows. The simplicity of being is watching the witnessing of you being you 
And the surrendering to choicelessness is an exaltation. It's not a detriment. It's a freedom to be in alignment with truth. It's not a death sentence. And in this course together, we're going to have time to discuss and to share in the joys and the sorrows of our journey, because you need to know 70% more than your students, according to Raw. 70% more. That's a lot, especially in this day and age where there are so many people enthused and excited and sharing about human design on their Instagram, becoming overnight celebrities by creating their own courses and having a great following. When in fact, they may not have delved into the depths of the mechanics. They even create their own certification programs using misappropriated words that are not in alignment with the energetics that are there within the circuitry, stream, gates, centers, what have you. So it's very, very important, more important now, more than ever, that you solidify the foundations of what this system has to offer before you move into becoming a living your design guide. And for that reason, every person that comes into my practice, I make sure that they are supported with the foundational elements of what they need to know in order to answer or handle the constant barrage of questions that you get from newcomers so that you feel confident and self-assured in your recognition of how this beautiful body graph and the mandala works, not just from theory, but from practice. Now, for Ra, he says, all learning, real learning, takes seven years. It takes seven years to change approximately all the cells in the body. We live in seven-year cycles. The moment that you begin to come to your own nature, the moment that you allow your body to live its life without resistance, you begin a deep process of deconditioning. Seven years later, you emerge quite literally a new being, yourself. So the most important thing is to recognize you do not have to be anything other than what you already are right here, right now, because we're all on this deconditioning journey and this path. It doesn't end in seven years because we're constantly being reconditioned by the people, places, circumstances, events, the global background frequency. It's always bombarding us with neutrinos that are not our unique inherent birth right nature. One of the biggest uh, concerns I had when I first became a living your design guide and uh, I was offered a position at Jovian Archive, I went to my own living your design teacher and Carol Zimmerman at IHGS. And I was so concerned that I would give everybody my not self. And she laughed and she said, Honey, it's something like, honey, it's okay. I gave everyone my not self too in the beginning. And that's one of the most beautiful opportunities for learning. I can tell you, uh, since 2014, being a guide myself, every time I taught that center, my bugaboo, totally open ashna, which is about conceptualization. Every time I taught that center, I could feel the triggering inside, the fear of being found out. What if I... What if they discover, I really don't know what I'm talking about, says the not mind inside the head. Fear of ignorance or fear of not being able to explain my insights. That triggering of the mind identifying with that voice and thinking that there was something wrong when I totally drew a blank. No, when you totally draw a blank, it's just that you're getting overwhelmed by so much awareness going in this direction and that direction and this direction. When you don't know what to think, do I have a total disconnect with regards to what this person is saying right now? The shift, the difference is now I can say, hey, I'm drawing a blank. Let me go check my notes. Let me get back to you. Let's go ask, or can you go ask this person or that person? Because I don't know. And yet the biggest fear of the undefined ashna is being found out of ignorance, of stupidity, of not knowing. 
And instead of the mind ruling the life with that fear, leading one to try and hold on to concepts that don't serve them or argue other people's concepts when they're really not sure, pretending to be certain rather than being open minded and being able to celebrate that I don't know. When we don't know, it means there's something to learn. And isn't that exciting? So the huge, tremendous shift that you can have in your own design by teaching this knowledge, this LYD knowledge over and over and over again, if it's right for you. I know it was for me for many, many, many years to be able to walk hand in hand, side by side with my students through the mechanics of the fundamental basis of how these centers work not only in general, but in specificity, in alignment with their design, asking for their sharing of their truth, of their witnessing, of their watching, making the unconscious conscious, such a gift. If you're somebody who is tickled by psychology, this is the most fascinating thing you will ever come across with regards to human design. The awareness of the truths within, the witnessing and the watching of the mechanical structure of the nature of mind, how easy it is to pinpoint how mind operates because it works like clockwork. It has rigid, strict structures of how it obeys life. And so when we can deconstruct that part of the work that we're going to be doing is entering into the first initial uh, awarenesses of how rave psychology, human design psychology works, because that is part of your work is to be aware, not only of your mind, but how is this person's mind working? Because the mind is not you. The mind is witness. The mind is watching. The mind is a collection of conditioning that is not the sum full totality of what you are here to live and breathe and be in this life. So you're going to learn and know yourself from the ground up. That is the only way to really deconstruct how this works is to use your experience as your laboratory, as your playground, as your discovery zone. That's what we're going to be doing together. Now, life is a duality when we talk about human design. Ross says, in my professional work, I have given between five and 6,000 individual readings, design analyses, whatever that has been. And regardless of culture or country, there is one prevailing disease. It is called self-hatred. Self-hatred varies in intensity from being just beneath the surface of the consciousness to being full-blown. It is the most human of ironies that self-hatred is truly misplaced because these people do not know themselves. They're hating the wrong person, disappointed with the wrong person, dissatisfied with the wrong person because they identify with the mind inside of the head about the self rather than the true authentic beingness that they are here to be. So you it is fundamentally true that we are required to master not only the mechanics of human design, but our mechanics to interface correctly. If someone's not for you, it's not personal. If someone comes to my class and they don't like the way that I do things, no problem, full uh, refund. Goodbye. Good luck. Have a great day. Have a great life. I'm not for you if my way triggers you, if it doesn't work for you. I get that. And so you should as well with you doing this work with others. If something isn't working, it's not your fault. It's not their fault. There is no fault. This is a no fault manual for living, for life. Every one of us has our own fractal family. Every one of us has our own way of being. So in accepting and aligning to your truth, your mechanics, your structure, your form, you have the awareness of your ability to be the guide that that other person is looking for. Now, 
we need to have some higher standards here, higher standards, the name of my first business that I began when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, higher standards. It was about house cleaning, by the way. I loved going into people's houses. So I became a realtor and a broker because I just loved houses. Now, where do people surround themselves with? Our flesh surrounds our spirit, our soul. It is what creates the life experience and what creates the flesh. It is the aura. The aura is building the body. So we need to know our stuff, your own stuff. So my particular joy in this life is really diving deep into the fundamentals and giving precise advice, not generalities, but specificities for that person's leadership success, particularly. Each one of us is designed to be a leader in our own right with regards to different aspects, different channels, different uh, qualities, different strengths, different nuances, different subtleties, different ways that each of us is designed to lead ourselves. Can you attune to your own leadership style? Can you allow the success or the satisfaction or the peace or surprise that is there to flower, to bloom, to be the guiding light that calls you rather than attempting to initiate from the stress, pressure, um, anger, frustration, bitterness, disappointment? I know life is hard right now with regards to everything that we're going through with everything, all this upsetting, uncertainty, challenges, what have you. Can you hold to your truth, your higher standard, your higher calling for you, your own stuff? Can you be aligned to your stuff rather than trying to identify with other people's stuff? When you're believing the mind story, that's other people's stuff. <laughs> the way that they think impressioned upon you from childhood, the stories you listened to, the movies you watched, the people you learned from, this person saying this or that, and then you attaching to and identifying. You have an undefined G center. You misidentified with everybody else's direction, role identity. Instead of aligning to the inherent truth within. So the life force within the generative, whether it's consistent or not, truth of your sovereignty must be attuned to in that you be what life is asking of you, no more, no less. And in that you find the perfect balance of adhering to your truth. Not that this is anything that you have to do. Of course, you are always your own authority. But it doesn't matter what your design is. What matters is how you live it. And the moment that you live out your own nature, says Ra, and you enter into life correctly, this is the moment that you get what is correct for you, the correct career, the correct relationships. It does not matter whether you are a homogenized success or not. There will be no suffering despite your state. You will be living out your nature and it will be clear to you that what is there for you is right for you, whatever it might be. There will be no part of you that says, I wish I could be this or that. In the becoming of yourself and aligning to your truth, the inherent nature within you shining like a bright beacon for others to be attracted to to bond with or not, as is correct for you. Okay, don't be afraid of aligning to your truth. Don't be afraid of surrendering to your process. This is a process that takes time. This is not about a weekend course that now you can go out and tell other people what to do. No, this is never about telling other people what to do. This is about turning it back to giving it to them to play with, to experiment with. And it is a huge shift when you can do that. Rather than um, fostering discord that is already there, helping to cut through the bullshit of their life 
to bring forth the truth that is already present somewhere deep inside within them. First, you surrender to your process, and then them. You can help them, encourage them, ignite them along that way. Human design system opens the door to the potential of self love. Finding self love is also to find a greater love, a love for life and love for others through understanding. Now, throughout this living your design program and seeing yourself, in coming to recognize your type, your profile, and coming to understand how you can live out your own nature, pay attention to the importance of that in your relationships with others. So many difficulties in this life are because we have great difficulties in our relationships, whether they are our career relationships or our personal relationships. What is true for the individual, a lack of understanding about their own nature, is true for relationships. Relationships operate out of the genetic imperatives, and they have their own rules. So one of the biggest benefits with regards to living your design your relationships become easier, not perfect, nothing's perfect, but easier, sweet and successful projector. They become satisfying generator. They become peaceful manifester. They become surprising, my beautiful reflector friends. Loving yourself, when that happens first and foremost, now that love can shine its light throughout the world, rather than operating from this inherent sense of brokenness or lack, or something that is rejectionable about you. All of us human beings are born with that wound. Rather than operating from that place, you can come from a place of authenticity, of standing in your truth, loving yourself exactly as you are, not as what you wish you could be, or what you imagine the other person might see in you if only you were to massage this word or do this thing or prove this point, what have you. You will be able to guide others in their process by the end of this experience. You, me, whoever else happens to join us, you will be able to guide them in their process when they are aligned for you. Not going to say that it's easy. In fact, it's one of the most challenging things to hold to your truth when also encountering someone else that is resonating at a dissonance, just like static on the line, this frequency of somebody coming to you with their not self purpose and asking all these questions. I'm shaking my hands in order to prove this point, this vibratory frequency that comes uncomfortable, you know, when somebody's coming to you and they're coming from this state of anxiety of depression, of disempowerment. Holding to your truth means you must vibrate to this frequency that is so strong, so powerful, so aligned within you, that even though they may be presenting to you, they're not self-purpose. You do not get dragged into that purpose and seeing them in that way aligning to seeing them for their strengths, for their powers, for their gifts. This is the most difficult part of the path by interacting with an other or in group, particularly if you are not designed for that particular scenario. So that is why one of the first things we'll do is talk about your success. How are you designed to be set up for success? It begins with the first step knowing thyself, knowing thy mechanics, trusting the process. Can you trust in living your unique design? Because this cannot be about paying lip service. This can be the most powerful, potentially enlightening, enlivening experience, the journey of your life, walking this path with your students, taking them on a journey. It just takes that one first step, investigating the science, the science of alignment. I use the word, the science of light down here, borrowing that from the recognition of how Vedic astrology is described in Jyotish, 
the human design system incorporates so many of the mysteries, the esoteric and exoteric fundamental sciences, observational and experiential, experimental. Remember, at this point, the biggest thing that keeps you from moving forward, from taking on this next step is your fear of failure, fear of not being good enough, fear of lack. Remember that you are the perfect guide for those who resonate with you. You have already experienced so much in this life. You have already found the truth of what human design can do for you. Otherwise, you would not be listening or paying attention to what I have to share, my experience, my feelings, my inspirations that I give to you. You are here to help them know who they are, their emotional wisdom, their manifesting power, their self-empowerment. This is not a path of self-improvement. This is about unveiling and uncovering all the negatives that they identified with, that they thought were true because they thought that it was themselves. Awakening them to their true self means that you attune them to trust their survival instincts, that you help them find their mutative power, the power of tenacity, the power of empowerment in following, marching to the beat of their own drum. Empowering their authority means you can use specific language, not just generalities, not just the trite memes on Facebook or Instagram, but that you can look at that human being's power inherent within, that awareness, that potential, that possibility, that uniqueness, calling them towards their uniqueness, describing their authority with a specificity of language that is attuned to their sensory capacity. What does it actually feel like resonant in the body? Those are the things that we're going to learn about and experiment with. What language do you choose to use when this person has this channel versus that 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 channel and that and so forth and so on? There's different words we use because these are different streams of awareness or power flows within the body graph. Use the specificity. It helps align people to their truth. And to do that, you need to know your human design, like the back of your hand, your human design, and then also the mechanics. So this is inspired from the work of Genu Oblivion, as well as Ra Uruhu, but also my experience with the human design system. The nine centered beings process is you know you're waking up from the thrall of conditioning. When you can see how your thoughts are programmed, how they try to manipulate you or others, you know you're deconditioning when you do not act on or believe the mind's storyline, which always leads us to suffering. Quote, only the not self suffers, unquote. The awakened nine centered being looks, sees, and accepts things as they are, takes its time according to its design to honor its unique process and speaks its truth without needing justification, does not try to interpret the motives or reality of another. It asks and can allow unique perspectives. It doesn't second guess itself or degrade its value in being. It respects others' boundaries without making demands, accusations, or exploitation. It asks about others' experiences, has an open mind to seize others' perceptions, can be vastly different. The nine-centered being is drawn to those of like vibration to support each other's evolution and growth. And that is the biggest, most important benefit of using this system to become a professional in the human design life coaching world, if that's what you choose to call yourself, human design guide, human design professional. Now we're going to take a pause because I do that with my regular courses, a pause at the top of the hour. 
When we come back, we're going to be uh, talking about questions. The three components of this program, there is a lecture and mentoring component, there is an audit or a repeat component, and there is a delivery component, one, two, three, and then you're ready to take that knowledge out into the world with your certification. Someone named Gloria, thank you, Gloria uh, from India. She would like to learn how to read the human design chart. Is there a training for reading the human design chart? Excellent question. Really excellent question. So let's see here. There we go. And for those of you who are here in the room, please do feel free to type your questions into the chat so that I can approach those as well. In order to read a human design chart, we need to have the prerequisites. Yeah, living your design as an awakening first, always our own self first. Then rave ABCs, rave cartography. In fact, let me just escape out of this. So mm, there is right here at the top the human design educational path at humandesignlifecoaching.com, learning human design. I will just type this in here for you. And it's important to go through the steps in order. Okay, going through the steps in order is really, really, really important. Where we learn first about living our design, then we move into the extension of LYD, which is ABCs. It's an empowering continuation of living your design that Raw designed for us. And then we have rave cartography. So that is the next uh, step for some of you who are here in this room is, is taking on the rave cartography. And that is something that is going to help you. Whoops, one of the videos is missing. Now there's a foundational course with BG5, the career and business analyst uh, path. And that is not as extensive as, as LYD, ABCs, and cartography. So for those of you who are in BG5 Foundation training, you will have to go back to the beginning because the Human Design Foundation is more comprehensive, has a lot more of the esoterics, does not have, um, found the BG5 Foundation does not have all the elements of the basic human design uh, system courses. They were condensed in BG5. So even if you've gone through that, you have to go through the foundations first. So then we become uh, able to read the chart from the perspective of analyzing what's there and giving someone their type, strategy, and authority. That's the most important thing. So I know that some of you who are here, let me just double check who's all here, are interested in becoming analysts, but not sure if becoming a guide is something that you want to do. So one of the things that I have offered in the past, and it's uh, case by case, dependent on each person, their interest and what their aim is, if you just want to take the mentoring portion, okay, oops, where am I going? Right here. The mentoring portion, the guide training, you can do that with me and you do not have to go through audit, deliver, nor will you be qualified to get certified as a guide. So a guide is more of a hand holder that steps someone through awakening. It is definitely for certain people and not for other people. It might not be appropriate to your interests. However, the foundational pieces of what I'm going to share with you with regards to learning the system and how to language things in alignment with how that person is designed to hear, see, know, or grasp what you are talking about and also how to be a, a professional that is going to actually be successful in making money with this. That's what the guide training is for the way that I teach it. Okay. So you're welcome to come into just this piece, just email office at human design life coaching. If you want that now for chart readings, guide training will not qualify you to be an analyst. Analyst training takes three and a half years. They will not certify you earlier than three and a half years. That is because that is half the time required for you to fully decondition in your first seven year cycle. Okay. So reading charts, long um, journey, definitely worth it though. 
so worth it. Just even just for yourself, not that you have to really even do anything with it, although it may be a very expensive way. It's definitely much, much less expensive than if you were to work one on one with somebody for that entire time. And you're doing it in a group of individuals who also share the same passions and interests with you in that we're learning to live in alignment with our truth. So let's dive into what the Living Your Design Guide training is about. The core element of the guide training are 10 classes. There's at least a 60 minute lecture and then some Q&A. I will be giving you some pieces with regards to different um, inspirational talks that I've had in the past that maybe don't necessarily have to be in the guide training, but I would like you to listen to them anyway, if it's correct for you. So also some video recordings. Now, these are going to be live streamed for our uh, group. If you're coming into a place where we're going to be practicing and playing, uh, and then also recorded, it's live streamed with regards to um, Zoom. We're using Zoom. You're going to be here if you're able to attend live. They're recorded if you're not. You can make up classes. We do require that you attend if it's in your time zone. So signing up for something that is uh, at the right time for you is really important. Now, we used to do uh, put the units in Facebook. We don't have that anymore. I mean, you could go back into the old stuff, but we have new stuff now. We have new courses. So you'll have other people that you can talk to within the course. And also, this is the main page of the learning platform that we all talk about human design with together. Okay. So you're going to be able to do that. And the requirement is that you get the living your design manual and the teaching slides at this point are optional. Okay. Optional. You don't have to get that right away. I know sometimes financing can be kind of challenging with regards to making the commitment to learning something new and entering into a new engagement of how you make your money. Now, the second portion of this is auditing a live living your design awakening experience, as I like to call it. it. Might be a workshop for others. It might be a journey, transformational journey. Whoever you take it with, it has to be a certified international human design school guide. That attendance is also required and you need to participate live in the classes. After that class with that guide, whoever they happen to be, that guide will wait after everyone else has been dismissed and talk with you about anything that you observed that you want to discuss or any questions that you have with regards to that live living your design. So you're doing that class again, but this time from the perspective of being mentored by your chosen guide, okay, as a trainee. And also interacting, you know, the guide might ask you, what is this like for you? Or how do you see that? If there's something strong in your design that might uh, serve as a teaching example within that course, everybody's different the way that they teach, okay, within that section of the course. So auditing a live LYD, men being mentored is important. Then you need to practice the delivery of this material, okay? So there's going to be, I think she might have changed it to 10 now. It's not eight anymore. It's 10. Okay, 60 to 90 minute classes, depending on how many people are there. That practicum delivery date is to be determined depending on your payment plan. If you're on the extended plan, it's going to be further off into the future. They are always recorded. They do not have to be attended. It's highly suggested that you do to watch your fellow students deliver, okay, to support in the journey to hear their stories of how they language things and to perhaps take that story and be able to share that if you don't have a story of your own or experience of your own with regards to describing the mechanics of that center or function, whatever it is that they happen to be practicing, okay? Reading and watching in the unit one is teaching examples for delivering the fundamentals of human design. That's a component that I've added on if you're interested in learning about practicing. I have lots of past examples, some of which are on my YouTube page freely in order for you to really grasp things. Now, let's talk about certification requirements. You do need to create a, an account with IHDS. So school.com is the website, the International Human Design School, the certifying body for Jovian Archive and the human design system. You must have completed the course requirements. 
Once you complete those course requirements, we send a certification fee to the International Human Design School. It's 20%, which pays for your certification, your listing on the IHDS for life. There is no other fee that you have to pay. You do need to sign the integrity agreement, which agrees that you will not misrepresent yourself. And then it's time to celebrate your journey. Okay. So as a living or design professional, you offer the living or design course, or you can just take people through different aspects of their design as a coach. Thank you so much for being here. My family just got home. So I'm going to say bye for now. If you have any other questions, office at humandesignlifecoaching.com. Much love to all of you. Take care. Bye-bye.